ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. It is Wednesday, February 8th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for being a part of today's program. I think we're going to have fun today. We've got coming up Marshall Cross Country Coach Caleb Bowen. He is joining us about 5.15, so we're going to talk to him. And, of course, we're going to take your text this hour, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. And, of course, something else to keep in mind. Um, We have different ways for you to be a part of the program. I want to get you starting to use our app, and we'll start that soon, but I want to get you used to it first. We've got something that's called shout outs and you got to get our app and how you do this is you go to your app store, either Google play or for the uh, iOS devices, Apple, your iPhone, and you find our app. We've got the links also on our website, wrvc.com. So you can go to the link there directly and you download our app. And then if you would open it up, you will find a menu. And I know this is, um, I'm trying to give you a visual here of what this looks like because uh, there's a reason why I'm telling you this now. So you go to our app and it's on the top left. It's those three horizontal bars. And what you do is, I just open it up and you click that and you have live stream, you have podcast, which you can listen to the show that way. Or you can also go to something called shout out. And if you click that, then it'll ask you to enter your name and location. So Paul from Huntington, I would type Paul from Huntington, and I would hit the microphone, and I would start recording. Hi, this is Paul from Huntington. I think your show is great. And then after you're done with it, you can play it back, see if you're happy with it, trash it. You can use the uh, icon that has uh, an arrow pointing up and a cloud to upload it. Then it comes to me. And so we'll give you an opportunity here in the following weeks to be able to send us out your, your shout outs, maybe during post game, especially during post game, because Marshall's coming up this week on the road once again for a couple, and we'll get your feedback that way, give you an opportunity to be a little bit more interactive and say you want to call in, but you know, you're not that comfortable talking on the radio and that's fine. A lot of people aren't. You can do a quick 15-second shout-out, 15, 20-second. Put your thought together real quick. Send us a shout-out. We'll play it back, and you can interact with us that way. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you. We're going to do some fun things with it as well. But the reason why I'm, I'm hitting that now is because I tried to send a tweet out earlier, and it's not a, it's not a Paul Swan issue because – I do know that some days I have hit that Twitter limit, especially around a Marshall football game. At one point, Twitter said, no, you've done enough. Thank you. Twitter's, at this moment, it is 5.09 on Wednesday, February 8th, Eastern Standard Time here. If you're listening to this on podcast, I tried to send a tweet and it told me that I had gone over my limit. So some of you sometimes will message at me. You want to talk to me. You'll go through Twitter. So there's some different ways to, one, not always be on Twitter. So that's why the shout-out is going to be good. The text line is always going to be good at 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Also, we're on Facebook. We've got a couple of things right now. Uh, We've got a page. And that's a great place to follow. We're going to do more with that. And I post the link there every day to the podcast so you can get that. There's also a group. And the reason why I'm doing the group is because we did this the other night, and it seemed to be pretty fun. People want to do it again. I started a Marshall basketball chat during the game. And I was tweeting less and just maybe popping a few more things into the group chat and just reading your reactions as it was going. It was pretty cool. And you got to be a member of the group. And you can find that link on Facebook. You can also join our page. And I will start posting this stuff out. 
once Twitter lets me. I'll start posting this stuff out a little bit more on that. But I don't want to depend as a secondary media outlet for me or yeah, you know, secondary platform. I don't want to depend solely on Twitter. I want to be where you're at. So if it's Twitter, so be it. But I want to also be where you're at and where you're going. And I also want you to be where we're at. So I'm encouraging you to download the app and start practicing, start sending some shout outs, some hot takes, questions. We'll prompt you at times for those. And we will do all of that here in the upcoming weeks. But I want to get you used to downloading the app, listening to it, and get the dog app while you're at it. 93.7 The Dog. Get that app as well because when we do Marshall games, we're going to try to keep it simple. I want you to have both apps because I'm going to be in different places, but I want you to also have the app where you can follow Marshall consistently. And that will always be 93.7 The Dog, our sister station, the 100,000-watt blowtorch there. So get that app. Go get the Dog app while you're at it. And then you can do the cool things like listen to the podcast for for the show. If you miss it, you can also send us the shout-out. So that's that's the app lesson today. And, again, that's because I'm perturbed that I was trying to tweet out a couple of things to give you a heads up of what's coming on the show today. And coming up on the show here in the next few minutes is going to be a conversation with the cross-country coach, and that is one Caleb Bowen. He is joining us on the program here in the next few minutes. We've got a lot to get into with him. There'll be home action this weekend for the Thundering Herd, so we'll get into that. There's also some good news today from track and cross-country. We'll get into that and something else I want to talk to you today. We had yesterday on the show the new head coach of Marshall Baseball, Coach Beals. He was on with us yesterday, so you can go get that on the podcast now. I knew this was coming out. It just wasn't official, and I knew where Marshall ended up. But, again, it wasn't official until it's official. The Sun Belt standings preseason coaches poll was out. We're going to talk about that later on for baseball. I don't know if it's fair, if it's inaccurate, it's uh, downplaying the herd, it's overselling the herd. We're going to get into that. And, of course, your text, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. So that's always the first place to start with the show, the text line. So we're going to do that when we continue. We'll also be on the phone with Caleb Bowen. He's coming up next here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Wednesday, February 8th edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Still to come, we're going to run down what the coaches think of Marshall Baseball. We've got the standings, preseason standings, what the poll looks like. Were the Sun Belt coaches kind? Were they in love with the herd? We're going to find that out. But I'll tell you what, one thing is certain right now. Uh, one team that everyone should be in love with right now is Marshall track and field, Marshall cross country. Just anybody that runs and does an outdoor sport, you should be in love with right now because they're doing stuff that uh, I didn't think we'd be able to do here in a few years ago, yeah, even with the new facility. Now we've added men's sports back to track and field and to tell us more about what's happening. Uh, we haven't had him on since I think the presser a few Actually, I think it was the the presser the last time that we talked to Caleb. And since then, it's just been one success after another. Caleb Bowen is with us. It hasn't been that long. It was the presser to basically say, hey, we've added men's sports. Uh, Hey, we've got baseball and we got men's sports. It was like a combo deal. Oh, I think you cut it out. I, I couldn't hear that first part of the question. Uh, see, you missed everything, Caleb. I said so many great things about you. 
And now I got to repeat it. Oh man. I knew you missed it. <laughs> no, I, I, what I was saying was, I think the last time we actually got together and talked was the presser. It was that combo deal. Hey, here's baseball. Uh, and uh, here's men's track and field, all of that. And ever since, it's just been upward and, and onward for this uh, for this program. Have have you been surprised by the early success you've seen? Uh, so not really surprised just because, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be, you know, with this program for the past like seven, eight years. Um, and even before then I ran here. So like the the building blocks were being built, you know, years, years ago. Um, but definitely the decision to bring back men's track reignited a fire, especially on the men's side. I mean, they were directly influenced by it, but even the women, I mean, uh, we were just talking today, uh, Coach Small and I, with uh, some of the administrators, and it was so fun going to our last track meet uh, up at uh, Louisville, and we had all the men down on the first row, and they were so loud cheering for the women um, you know, in all their events, and likewise, the women are right there with them uh, cheering for the guys on the team. So there's just a huge excitement uh, that's been brought with just adding you know, the men's team you know, letting them compete in the track meets, going to the conference championship here in a couple of weeks. Um, so I think the excitement is what has really brought in all the you know, school records, uh, the awesome performances, the athletes of the week and all that. So, you know, we're just really excited to be part of it. My guest, Marshall cross country coach, Caleb Bowen, the event coming up this weekend we want to talk about is the Marshall Invitational. That's on Friday and Saturday. Who's coming into this? Uh, who should we be excited to watch the herd compete against? Yeah, so I mean, we have seven teams coming in. Um, all of our meets are Division One only meets for the most part. Um, so we have Wright State, Dayton, um, West Virginia University, Appalachian State, Moorhead State, and uh, Northern Kentucky, and they're all coming down. Uh, it's going to be a really good opportunity to you know get another you know great competition for the sprinters and jumpers and throwers but it's going to be more of a distance meet if that makes sense you know because a lot of these teams like west virginia like dayton like appalachian state you know they have their specific uh, events that they focus on and you know i'm really excited on my like my side just be the distance coach um to see what these teams bring into the you know the distance races uh but you know each like i said each one has their own event so we're going to see a lot of great uh, competition on all the events, but really, I think I'm most excited for the distance races. Have you seen an uptick as far as people who maybe want to come support both the men and women now that you actually have both men's and women's sports at Marshall? Have you seen that uptick in, in fan support, people maybe coming by uh, that you've never seen before showing up to an event? Uh, yeah, we've had a few. I mean, we've always had really good support for the women. Um, you know, other sports teams on, on campus have been great with coming to the track meets and supporting. But, you know, there's definitely a lot of excitement uh, with you know, bringing back a, another sport. You know, one that was uh, ended, what, 2003, 2004, somewhere in there. Um, I think a lot of people were really excited to see the sprinters from the football team uh, come out and, you know, some big names on the football team who are awesome people to work with. Um, so I think, yeah, I think there's been quite a few new faces that have been, you know, showing up and supporting. Uh, I guess I'm probably going to see a whole lot more this weekend, especially with us bringing back, uh, we have the Marshall Track and Field and Cross Country Alumni Reunion this weekend on Friday and Saturday. So we're going to see a whole lot of people, you know, from the past uh, who who have been supporting uh, for so long. But this is like really a, an honor for them, uh, a privilege for us, an honor for them to to be able to come and see something that they've been wanting for so long. Top five names. Who's coming back that maybe Herd fans will remember? Oh, shoot. Um, to be honest, I don't know because I haven't really looked at the list. Um, I do know like a lot of guys from my era, you know, whenever I was running, which is from 2011 to 2015. Uh, oh, I don't know. Um, I do know that we have one former athlete that's competing – um, he's going to be throwing the weight throw. Um, oh shoot! I, I just his name has lost me. Um, I put you on the spot. Yeah, You'll I, never come back again now because of that question. <laughs> apparently not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I because I, I yeah, put you on I, the I spot to, here. I'm going to hear about that later. 
you probably will. <laughs> I need to I need to like look at a list and I can tell you some names that you probably would remember, but off the top of my head I, I really can't. Okay. Well we'll we'll revisit it. I'm sure I'll get a text later from uh from sports information and David O'Leary. I'm sure I'm gonna get that message later. Why'd you do that to him? Here's the list. But uh, so Randy Moss isn't coming. So basically that's a, that's a no there. That's a no there. Uh, I'm not even sure if we reached out to him, uh, but it would have been really cool if he did. <laughs> he was something on the uh, on the field, and so now you've got football players who want to do more than just play football at Marshall. They want to run track and field. You alluded to that earlier. Uh, is Coach Huff or any of the football coaches kind of coming by uh, more often, checking out what they're doing? You know, wondering maybe why they haven't been able to get those guys to run as fast for them when they're on the football field. You know, what it, you know, what are you seeing from the uh, from the other coaches, especially football? I know we we kind of joked we were trying to get Tavion to uh, to run, but yeah, you, know, you guys suggested maybe the high jump for him. Yeah, I think high jump would be best. Uh, but to answer your question, so uh, our our strength coach BA, he's been you know heavily involved with watching what seeing what they're doing. Um, you know, BA has been awesome to work with and it, it's really cool cause he's a true student of the sport. And what I mean by that is he's always trying to learn more, you know, and I remember a couple of weeks ago when we first started, uh, up with practice again, him and his guys, the, the other strength coaches just came and watched, uh, and learned from our sprint coach, Don Yentes about acceleration. Um, you know, he had a lot of questions and he just sat in and was asking, uh, our sprint coach questions and, you know, asking why we were doing things the way we were doing it. Um, and I think it's definitely helping, uh, our sprint coach has, he constantly asked the guys on the football team, Hey, do you think you're getting anything out of this? Hey, do you think this is making you faster? And they always say, yeah. Um, you know, it'd be, I'm hoping that we'll see a lot of progression from the first meet, you know, back in January to you know this meet and also the conference meet. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, the, the other coaches, I haven't really seen many football coaches come by too much, but they were all there at the, uh, at the first home meet. And I imagine we'll see them again at this meet as well. Marshall cross country coach, Caleb Bowen joining us, uh, the events coming up this weekend for fans to maybe give an eye to how fast these guys and the ladies really are, how well they progress and Friday it's a 6 30 p.m. Saturday it's going to be 10 30 a.m. and of course there's going to be a lot of distance in this uh, we've got something exciting to talk about because we we touched on this earlier I want to circle back to it there have been a lot of awards recognition there's a lot of let's just say some some really good performances I think that's fair to say some record-setting performances some you know, high-level performances, and it's been acknowledged by the league, and we just got another one today. I know you're excited about this. Is Macy Majoy named Sunbelt Women's Field Athlete of the Week. She is a graduate from Ohio, broke her own school record in the pole vault at the PNC uh, Bellarmine Invitational last Friday, uh, and she was is, – is dominant the right word to say? Is dominant – probably the best way to describe what she did oh yeah definitely i mean the macy majoy has been a consistent pole vaulter her whole career here she's always been good even the first day she came on campus she was good um but it's just been amazing to see just the progression that she's had year after year after year and with this being her fifth year i think you know she's finally seeing like hey you know track and field is almost up for me you know, she's going to join the Secret Service here after she graduates with her master's. And, uh, you know, she's just trying to get the most out of herself. Um, so she's going all in. I mean, she never, like, has been as uh, dominant as she is now. But I think it's just because of all the hard work she put in, you know, in the previous four years. Um, you know, that hard work is finally paying off. She's just dialed in, and she's listening to coaches. She's listening to her body and herself, and she has just this, new array of confidence in each meet. So it's just been a wild ride just to watch it all happen. So she's honored from the league this week, and then we're getting close to, of course, uh, conference, but I want to focus on the home meet first. How has, let's just say, with the addition here, how has the, I think, response statewide, let's go there first, because now 
you've got a lot more attention you know, on Marshall. And it's benefiting the women as well. It's, you know, anything that is addition is going to benefit both the men and women. Yeah. Are you seeing a resurgence as far as the state, you know, more interest, more people that are wanting to take up the sport again, you know, both cross country, track and field. And now that there's an actual in-state opportunity for, for high schoolers, you know, are you seeing, you know, more of a focus from coaches or more of an interest you know, in-state and regionally? Because here's this wonderful option now. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, because we've, we've lost a lot of recruits, especially in my area, during the cross-country only season, just because we didn't have men's track. Um, and unfortunately, where when we brought back men's track you know, in October, a lot of the class, like this upcoming class, uh, 2023, they'd already, you know, they're ready to sign already or committed to other places. So, you know, I got a few, but I could have gotten a whole lot more, I think, from the, like, the state had it been like an earlier decision. But, you know, better late than never. Uh, but, yeah, we're seeing a whole ton of 2024's uh, prospects who are reaching out. And it's almost to the point where, like, it's hard for me to respond to all the emails just because there's so many. Um, and actually, uh, our AD, uh, Christian Spears, uh, allowed us to hire a new uh, assistant coach to help with that uh, just because he knew we were, you know, we already worked hard enough with the, just the women's team and the cross-country team. So, you know, adding on a whole other sport, he definitely uh, blessed us with having uh, Andrea Deem come back and, you know, really help us out. Um, but, yeah, we're seeing a ton. Um, you know, we're still in a dogfight with a lot of other schools, though. I mean, Ohio University on my side with, you know, men's uh, distance, they're always tough to out-recruit just because Athens is a really cool place and they have in-state tuition for West Virginia. So. You know, we go head to head quite a bit. Um, other schools, you know, the, the kids we want to get are also looking at other bigger schools like Kentucky, Louisville, um, you know, places like that. So we want to get the best that we can, um, but we definitely have gotten a whole lot more uh, interest from a lot of kids in state and out of state. I'm probably taking you somewhere you can't touch on too much, but. With the recruiting being so tough, yeah, are there conversations to maybe try to match a school? Like, just not you can't match every school and what they do. You can only do what you can do and and try to be the best at it. But yeah, you know, that was a huge point you just made. In state tuition for for kids in Ohio that are from West Virginia. So, you know, are there conversations you're having? You know, all the time. You know, the administration different coaching staffs that you're privy to as far to try to maybe limit some of those uh, advantages that other schools have. And I don't know if the, the football thing is really big now and that's going to help you. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it is kind of tough to, to figure all of it out. You know, we, we don't like where we are, we're not a head count sport. You know, we do um, percentages and stuff. So like for cross country, we're allotted five scholarships. Um, that's a fully funded program on the men's side. And then like on the women's side, like track and field kind of encompasses all of it. And they have 18 scholarships. Um, here in the next few years, we're going to slowly start getting more and more track and field scholarships. But just right now, we, we, we don't have any money for it. Um, so as we get more money, we're going to be able to offer more. So to touch on your point, like matching other schools, it, it's it's kind of tough just because like a school may offer – let's just say a 420 miler from Hurricane West Virginia. Um, you know, they may be able to offer them more just because they have more available. Uh, and that's just up to the head coach, whoever he or she has available. Um, and then there's also this like academic support and uh, scholarships there. Uh, if they're on Pell Grant. So there's a lot of different aspects that go into each decision. Um, and that's, that's the stuff that we do normally in the summertime. You know, we have a huge recurring list and we, dissect you know what the needs are you know where they're from where we think they're going to be able to provide what can we provide them and it's you know it's a little more complicated than i can probably explain on this phone call but uh you know we we do have a lot of research that goes into it and it then ultimately whenever we bring them on visits and they like it that's all the other aspect of it is that, you know we don't want a kid to come here and then transfer in a year you know we're not big fans of the portal at all you know we want them to come here stay here for four or five years get their degrees and end up being you know, hopefully pretty good runners. So, you know, I'd rather have a kid come here and enjoy their time rather than trick a kid and coming and being miserable. If that makes sense. No, perfect sense. 
Marshall Cross Country Coach Caleb Bowen joining us. And the other thing I want to, again, with recruiting, and I don't want to focus too much on football because you're, you know, it's a bonus. It's your football is always going to be football, and you're always going to be you know, track and field and cross country. But there is that crossover. So, you know, are there conversations with some of the football staff, or will there be some synergy? And I hate using that buzzword, Caleb, but as far as <laughs> players uh, that want to come in for football, and part of it is they would like to run track and field as well, or they'd like to, you know, have more than one sport to participate in. You know, what are those conversations like or starting to look like? Well, um, I think we definitely need to have more conversations between the, the two staff because, um, like, right now I don't think there really is much. Um, you know, but I think that is something that football can definitely recruit too because there are a ton of football players that love to do track as well. I mean, our sprint coach, Don Yentes, he's really good friends with the LSU uh, head track and field coach. And they LSU uses that in their recruiting all the time, um, and it makes them faster. It's a lot of cornerbacks, wide receivers, and you know once the football season's over, they pretty much just drop them off with the track and field team and let them race the the meets that they can run. And then summertime, they come back as football players. I mean, there's there's so many like lists of all the great football players that run track. I mean, Randy Moss being one of them, but the the list is so comprehensive. Um, so it, it's definitely a, like track helps football and help and football helps track. They definitely co and coincide with each other. So yeah, I, I just look forward to the you know, discussions that we can have and what we can do to help and and all that. So, are you getting any uh, looks from soccer from uh, Chris Grassy's squad or Michael Swan's squad as far as you know some of the um, they're they're running a lot. It's a different type of running, but they're running a lot. So you know, does that translate well? Uh, not typically. I mean, it, it's just two different sports. Um, you know, like they, they always talk about how soccer players run so many miles in a game and I'm sure they do, but it's, it's just, it's just different. You know, it's different. From, you know, you're redlining when you're running a cross country race, you're redlining for six miles or whatever the distance is. That's totally different from being able to do use your agility and, you know, strategically planning when you're going to attack the, the goal and stuff like you're running, but you're not going full blow the whole time. So it's just two different sports. I don't even like to compare. That's why we're asking you the tough questions today, Caleb. So, uh, <laughs> so now we know. But uh, that interested me a little bit because I know there are some crossovers in different sports. Football being the most obvious, but you know, I didn't know if you had any potential crossover from you know, soccer. Uh, as we joke around with Tavion Kinsey, maybe doing the high jump. There's some crossover there. Uh, I don't know if he'd do the pole vault, but the high jump definitely. You guys were, you guys <laughs> yeah. were on on spec there. So the meet's coming up this weekend. Uh, what can fans expect uh, as far as if they haven't been before? This is the first time they want to check it out. What do they need to know? Um, how much does it cost to get in, support the herd, and all that good stuff? Well, the cool thing is, I'm pretty sure that the track meet's going to be free to come in. So. No tickets required, no money, anything like that. What I would say to expect, uh, I definitely recommend everybody, uh, we're going to finalize the, the schedule of events probably th- actually this evening because um, our entries just closed at 5 today. So we can go back and you know, make some a little changes to the tentative schedule that we have. But, you know, find an event that you really want to watch and just come up, relax, and enjoy it. Uh, we're going to have a lot, whole lot more people due to the alumni event going on as well. But uh, yeah, get there early. You know, try to watch. If you're a distance fan, you know, you love watching the the distance races and all the strategy that's involved with that. I would come for us. I would watch the 5K and the mile and the open 3K. Um, those are going to be really good events. If you're coming to watch a school record happen, um, which you know, pole vault obviously is one that goes down pretty much every weekend. Um, and we have a great second pole vaulter as well, uh, Diana Goodman. She's been killing it as well. But, uh, you know, my studs, we got Kylie Maston in the 800. She's already the current school record holder. She's going to try to break her record again uh, and get a good spot for a conference. Um, you know, Abby Herring and Sydney Smith, they're going to be in the 3K. So that'll be a fun, uh, fun little event for both of them. You know, Sydney is the current school record holder in the indoor 3K, and Abby is the school record holder in the outdoor 3k so 
That'll be fun. Um, and then we have a freshman, uh, Hannah Weiler, who's going to be trying to break five minutes in the mile for the first time. Uh, so that'll be a fun event for her. Um, on the men's side, you know, especially in my events, we're trying to figure out who we're going to put where at conference. Um, and like right now, uh, top 12 get into the fast seat of the 3K. So we're going to put our all conference runner, Evan White, in the 3K. And we're hoping that our freshman, Matt Schenenberg, who is the state champion from Winfield last year, we're going to put them together so that they can push each other to get into that uh, fast heat. Because Evan's already in, but we're trying to get Matt in as well. Um, and then Brett Armbruster, he's one of our uh, mid distance runners. Usually he's in the 800. Um, he was trying to sneak in and try, you know, break that school record in the 800. But uh, since we've been doing it for a couple of weeks now, we're going to try open mile, and he's going to try to run sub 412. So we got some exciting stuff coming up. Good talking to you. We'll do this again soon, Caleb, and um, we'll uh, hopefully be talking about some more records being broken here in the next few weeks, and then, of course with conference and. Um, it's exciting. I'm glad uh, everything's working out so far, and it, it's uh, it's been fun to follow from afar and up close. Yeah, yeah, it's been awesome. Thanks for having me on the on the or the live show, live show, podcast, multimedia empire, where, wherever, wherever, wherever your your speakers awesome. are, you're, you're everywhere. Nice, that's awesome. So you can go back and listen on the podcast. Yeah, Love you, it. you can do that. You could you could download the app, listen to the podcast there. You can just subscribe to it on Apple podcast spotify wherever you get your podcast uh, i mean anywhere i mean i, I feel like i'm awesome. making a commercial pitch here but that's that's what i'm doing <laughs> so yeah you can go back and listen to the podcast and um and, and enjoy it again and critique us and like you know paul you could answer that asset question better you know <laughs> sounds good all and, right have a great evening thanks caleb appreciate you doing it that's caleb bowen the marshall cross country coach it was uh, good catching up with him and talking a little bit about what's happening with uh, the sports of running at Marshall University. More coming up here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Wednesday, February 8th edition, The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We've got basketball action for you tomorrow. Thundering Herd getting it done, hopefully, these last few weeks in getting into a, a good spot in the Sun Belt Tournament. It's another mirror schedule. The women are going to be in action at 11 a.m. tomorrow, and the men will be at Coastal Carolina at 7 o'clock. So women versus Coastal, men versus Coastal. We'll have the men's game for you beginning at 6 o'clock right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So I'm hoping that the Thundering Herd can bounce back, and whatever the outcome may be, we'll be right here for you at the pregame. And then the postgame, we'll take your text. We'll hear from Dan D'Antoni. I'm hoping that we'll have more people on the post-game Zoom this time so we can um, some really break this one down because I'm not necessarily able to to hang out to the Zoom long periods. So uh, I'm hoping that more people will be on the Zoom with us tomorrow uh, for the post-game. If it's a win, it'll be quick. If it's a loss, it might be quicker. I don't know. But that's what's coming up tomorrow, so we'll get into that. Baseball is uh, rapidly approaching, and we've got the preseason coaches poll today. Now, I knew about this yesterday. I knew where the herd would end up, and this is now official. Marshall, uh, well, you know what? Let's start. Let's start from the top. The coaches all believe, except for maybe two or three, that Southern Miss is the number one team. And so, with 11 first-place votes, Southern Miss is number one. And then tied for second, Georgia Southern and Texas State. Texas State also received the first-place vote. Louisiana is fourth, also receiving a first-place vote. And there's really not that much separation between Georgia Southern, Texas State, and Louisiana as far as the points are concerned with the votes. Coastal Carolina is right behind those teams at number five with also a first-place vote. So not much separation there from five to one. 
Here's where the separation starts to begin. South Alabama comes in at 6th, and then Old Dominion is at 7th. Not too much uh, as far as difference between 6th and 7th as far as the, uh, the points, the votes. Troy comes in at number 8. And then after that, there's a drop-off. Georgia State is number 9. James Madison is number 10. Then Louisiana Monroe is 11. App State is 12th. Coming in next to last is Marshall with 36 points. And then Arkansas State dead last with 23 points, number 14. So Marshall picked 13th in the baseball preseason coaches poll. Marshall, of course, brand new coach. We talked to him yesterday, Greg Beals. If you missed that, you can go back and listen to it on the podcast. And the easy way to do that is through a subscription on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or you can even download it and listen to it on our app. And all you have to do is download the ESPN 94.1 and AM 930 app for your iPhone or your Android. You can get the link to the store of your choice on our website at wrvc.com. So that's one way you can go back and listen to that conversation yesterday. But Marshall's got 23 new players coming in, 16 returning players. And conference preseason awards and all Sun Belt team, not a single Marshall player on the list. It's all Texas State, Southern Miss, Louisiana, Georgia Southern. There is a couple of players from Georgia State. But that's it. That's your preseason all Sun Belt team combination of those teams. So Marshall doesn't have to really worry about too much pressure. I mean, you're thirteenth. You're thirteenth. So what's the worst that could happen? You finish thirteenth. Or possibly fourteenth. Okay, let's just go there. Marshall possibly finishes fourteenth. I'm not saying this is a throwaway year, but next year is going to be different, I hope. you got the new stadium to recruit to. You've got this thing called the transfer portal. We'll see how that works for Marshall Baseball. Could you imagine really good players seeing Marshall as an opportunity and can transfer into Huntington to play baseball? Brand new ballpark. You see that the school is making a commitment for baseball. The state has made a commitment, or at least the governor's office has made a commitment for baseball with a generous, generous check. That seems to be the talk of the town in Charleston, how that money came to be. But that's another show, another day, and it's that, that's, that's a different debate. But Marshall's building a baseball stadium. New coach, new energy. Going to play some games. Some belt games are going to be played in Charleston at Gomark Ballpark. Route 2 is still going to be utilized. So there's, there's a lot still happening with Marshall baseball. So this year, Marshall picked 13th. Okay. i like to see Marshall finish, obviously, above 13th. Maybe a little bit above the pack. We'll see. I'm not saying this is a throwaway year, but I think we're going to see what happens with the Thundering Herd the following year with the new ballpark, and then after that and after that. I think that's where we're going to start to see and push for the progress. Same thing with the men's soccer team. Once the soccer field got established and once you brought in a new coach, and you started to recruit more to that soccer field, and that soccer program that's on the rise, I think you saw success. We've got to take a quick time out, but we will come back and wrap it up with you here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And that's going to do it for this edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I want to thank today for coming on the show to talk a little bit about track and field and cross country. Marshall cross country coach Caleb Bowen heard in action on Friday and Saturday. 
That'll be over at the uh, indoor complex. And, of course, we got basketball action for you tomorrow here on ESPN. 94.1 at AM 930 as the Herd's getting set to take on Coastal Carolina. We go on the air at 6 o'clock. You can listen to that pregame coverage here on ESPN. 94.1 at AM 930 or on 93.7 The Dog. Once again, thanks for tuning in. Twitter's working again. Finally, you can find me on Twitter when it works, at Paul Swan. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Until then, have a great night, everyone. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.